there's no rules in this bitch, okay? So we're gonna talk about whatever you want, whatever we want, because we're gonna spin it and let y'all know what we're gonna talk about for 15 minutes. We're gonna give you rapid fire stuff. They're the coaches, I'm the everyday guy. I'm gonna challenge them because who the fuck are they to tell me what to do? They don't know me, they do know me. They've known me for a really long time, but that's not the point. The point is we're here to give you guys a fun podcast and hopefully you learn some shit along the way. Uh, welcome guys. This is another episode of Mindset U. This is episode number 61, 62 now? One. This will be 60, 61, 61. 61. Episode 61. I had a 10 milligram edible. I'm feeling great. Got my pets around. It's a good time. It's me and Moses today. Uh, Francis is in California. He's actually at me. Universal. No, he's at Universal right now. He's at Universal right now? He's at Universal, bro. Very jealous. I'm very jealous of that. Kevin, my boy Kevin, was in Disney this past weekend mm-hmm. and then fucking Francis in Universal. And we're he literally called my ass. He literally, he literally sent me a voice note when I was trying to get into his apartment to get the equipment. Yeah. And he's, he voiced note saying like, oh, I'm at a ride in Universal. Just uh, text, like he's literally on the ride, sending a voice note to me uh, while I, I, like, I just heard all of the noise in the background. Of the like, screaming. I can't tell if he's being a dick or is he just like. Just he's being right. genuine. Oh, I didn't be there. <laughs> so they can get his ass. Or is he like. I'm on a ride and I want him to know I'm on a ride. Uh, I'm having a good time. It's probably a mix of the two. It's a mix of the two. But this also dies into our thing of competition. <laughs> yes. Yes. I can't tell if Rance is being competitive or not. <laughs> you can never tell if he's being competitive or not. I think that's the genius behind Rance's. Um But yeah, I wanted to talk about competition today because I've been uh, balls deep in The Last Dance. And um, just everything that's going on in the sports world and just life in general. Um, a lot of stuff's happening. The Knicks, you know, going to make it to Knicks. the second round of the playoffs. We don't see bro, that too much. Don't often. jinx it. Bro, bro don't jinx it. It's possibly 3-1, gonna, you know. They're going to possibly. Yeah, well, they need one more. Yes. So, I mean, the NBA playoffs is, is really fun to watch right now. And yeah. it's a lot of it's because like, everything's shaking up, so it's yeah. It's, you have all these young teams at the top who are doing well. They're on like number two, one seed, and then you got like all the veterans. You got a championship team at number six, Twice. right? You got Twice. and they're they're tied two two with one of the best offensive yeah. teams in the league, and then you have LeBron James and the Lakers who literally had to play a playing tournament, and they're up against the number two seed. So like, it's crazy right now, man. It's crazy it's wild how just competition has increased over the years, and, and just it's you know, it basketball is fun again. It it's is fun, fun again. Watch. It's it's fun again now because you don't have that one team that's just fucking dominating every single fucking time. You know, yeah. so it's good. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of competition, I really wanted to pick your brain about that because you are a coach. You have played competitively pretty much your entire life. Most of your life is competition. Um, so I figured you'd be the best person to talk about it with because you are also one of the most competitive people I know <laughs> when I think back <laughs> to it. <laughs> I mean, definitely when I was, yeah, when definitely I was younger, younger. I was like, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I, just, um, I still have a lot of that now, but for sure when I was younger. It's definitely toned down. It's definitely toned down. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to pick your brand about it because one, you're a coach and I wanted to see like your view on on, you know, competitiveness and, and that do we does everybody need to have a competitive drive to them? That's, it's a it's a blanket is neat question. kind of thing. Yeah. Right? But it's like, but you kinda need to be a little bit competitive in your journey to even if it's with yourself, I I guess to want to get mm-hmm. better at something or just to be the best you, you kind of have to be competitive, right? Yeah. What, what so cost? there, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming that this is, uh, the question comes up for you while you watch the last dance and you're seeing, well, Michael Jordan yeah. sacrificed a lot of his relationships because he was so competitive. Um, I think to be personally, I don't know the answer if it is, I don't a think right or wrong right. thing. I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think there is an actual answer to right or wrong. There's 
Can I just Penny? Penny. What's her name? Oh, Penny. 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 All right. Um, so I don't, I don't really know the answer, but I would say that competition is important. I, I don't think you can live without it and be successful. I think there has to be a degree of competition that exists within you. And to say that you are not competitive, it's hard for me to believe for anyone to not be competitive. Yeah, it's because because one way or another, yeah, it, yeah, in something, either that or I would think it goes into like an ego complex. Because like if you look at Michael Jordan, it was an ego complex. He wanted to be the best. He wanted to to be superior in in that game, and he was. And because he used that ego complex to become the best, he actually did right. So, but then there's some people that are afraid of being the best, and they have an ego complex where they don't or they don't consider themselves to be competitive. So they're like, oh, I'm not competitive. But in reality, when they lose at something or when they're given an opportunity to play in a competition or game, they might reject that opportunity because they don't like losing. Mm. So I think, sense. yeah. So I, I have a person in my head that I think of when, when I think about competition. I don't want to say this person's name. Uh, but okay. we know who we're talking about. You know who we're talking about? Are, are you in my head? Are you in my you know head? what? You do, you don't want to say it. Could it possibly be? Well, you could just blanket out the name. Maybe we could just like bleep out the name. Right, you could just bleep while we it edit it. Yeah, just bleep it out. Yeah. Rancis. Who do you think it is? Yeah. Rancis. Well, Rancis. No, Rancis is competitive. No, he's competitive. Yeah, no, it's not Rancis. Who is somebody it? that you? And, it, it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. we spoke about we spoke about this at Vita Project m- many times because he would say he's not com- competitive. It's like, oh, I'm not competitive. Um, you know, I don't think I think games are stupid. Blah blah blah. And everything he likes to do is by himself. Um, but whenever there was an opportunity for him to to be competitive. He was scared of that opportunity because he was scared of losing. He was scared of failing. He was scared of not not being accepted by a team. So he would say that he was not competitive versus saying, I'm afraid of losing. Even though in reality, he was competitive. Got it. So that's one person that I think of when I think about these types of scenarios. Is like, oh, I'm not that competitive. I'm like, yeah, you are. You just don't like losing. And I think that's the most important part of being competitive is like yeah. you have to know how to lose yeah i think you know like reflecting back on that now like younger like you know me i never played competitive sports growing up you know and stuff like that and um i think i had this whole thing like oh i don't like comp like i was always competitive with my friends and stuff like that but i don't think i ever had that like oh i don't want to compete in a sport kind of thing um one because i wasn't good and two because I didn't want to lose. It's just like, I look at it the same way of like having that fear of like talking to girls, you know what I mean? Being like real shy, like introducing yourself to a girl when we were younger and stuff like that. It's like, I wasn't afraid of talking because I'm, I could talk. I could talk. I was afraid Mm -hmm. of the rejection and it was afraid to lose. So it was like, Oh, I don't need to go talk to girls. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You know? So it kind of makes sense. Like I, I look at it. I look at it a little bit differently now when, when you paint it like that. It's like, no, no, you, you're competitive. You just didn't want to play the game because you were scared of losing. Yeah, and that's essentially what happens to everybody in our lives. I like, it. In, in one way or another. It, so to say that you're not competitive is denying a human like part of you. Yeah. Uh, because like you can say somebody like, for example, uh, anybody in a relationship that you know, loses their partner, breaks up with their partner, and their partner decides to be with somebody else. There's not a part of you that's a little bit jealous of that. It's not a part of uh, you that's questioning who you are as an individual. Yeah. You start, you start comparing, comparing that, everything. Yeah. That's a form of competition. Yeah. Right? Because now you're looking at the other person and you're saying, well, is this person better than me? Okay, better at what? <laughs> so then what game are you playing? <laughs> what game are you playing in your yeah. mind? So yeah. there is a competitive nature, and, and I think it comes down to feeling superior in some oh, way, totally. whatever it totally. is. Totally. Totally. I, I look at it now with 
No, continue. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, like, I look at it even now, like, with with boxing. Like, I find it, I'm uber competitive now. Like, I love sparring. And a part of me is like, oh, just, like, to get better. No, part of it's I want to see how good I am compared to whoever else has the balls to step in there. Mm. Kind of thing. Um, mm. And it's a lot of fun. It's, just, it's like a high, almost. Mm. Because, like, you you have no choice but to compete in that moment or else you're going to get hit. You know what I mean? And it's like hit and don't be hit kind of thing. And you're, sometimes you have to take a few hits, blah, blah, blah. But it, I, I find it more interesting now in the fact that like that I want to do um, my first amateur fight where it's like, oh, like I want to explore what it's like to actually be me when it comes to, to, to fighting. It's a boxing, not fighting, but but to boxing because it's one of those things that like at the gym it's like you don't go all out because you don't try to hurt the person that you're moving around with because like you go to the gym together it's a brotherhood sisterhood it's everybody you know um but i'm excited to explore like that after watching like the last dance i'm excited to to know what it's like to like be mean and be real competitive be kind of cutthroat almost um and i'm excited for september like i i really can't wait to like I'm it, I'm devoting all my time to to getting ready for this, so it's so I got a question for you. Fun, yeah, yeah. So I got a question for you. Do you find yourself now? Because I've always thought about this. Do you find yourself now being more competitive when doing a sport like boxing, which is kind of required for you to uh, be solo in your sport? It's like a solo sport. There's not much team work yeah. to it i mean obviously if you have your coaches around you you have all these other people around you yeah until you it's but time to compete now do you find that to be that you're more competitive in that kind of environment versus like oh, playing yeah. on a court five on five with yeah. teammates why do you yeah. why do you think that is for you yeah because there's nobody you can blame there's nobody else that you can rely on mm -hmm. it's just you there's nobody else it's real lonely because it's it's um with with any team sport where it's like if something goes wrong, you can do everything right and it still could not go your way because mm -hmm. another teammate might not show up that night or, you know, they should have passed the ball and said they shot it, whatever the case may be. Uh with with boxing or with any like solo sport, um there's nobody to place the blame on. There's nobody else to to lean on you have to lean on yourself and i think that's something that I, I really 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 fucking enjoyed uh mm -hmm. learning this part of myself um, so do you so do you think that because all the responsibility falls on you that's what makes you more competitive because it's like i have to end up dealing with myself if i lose yeah, yeah, because I'm not so much like I'm not with boxing. It's like I'm not scared of of losing because like there has to be a winner, there has to be a loser. Um, mm. I'm more scared of not going to failure, not going until I can't go anymore, kind of thing. I think that's it's. I think um, there's a a, a phrase that one of the coaches at the gym says. He says um. Fatigue makes, um, ah, fuck, what was it? He says it all the time, and I can't remember it now because I'm a little stoned. <laughs> he says, uh, fatigue makes cowards out of men, kind of yeah. thing. And and I like teetering that line of when you're in a, when you're sparring and you're like, it's like the sixth round, and you don't got much left. And you're sparring a kid who's, I'm sparring a lot of kids who are, 23 24 19 you know i'm i'm 35 i don't move as fast as they do so i have to rely on my wits and i have to rely on my toughness and i have to rely on, on general like i guess like ring iq and footwork to to beat a lot of these guys and to beat them to the punch and it's something that it's on you and i can i don't care if i get my ass whipped but I'm going to go out swinging. I'm not going to go 
I don't want to. I'll take look at it this way: the Tank and Ryan Garcia fight. I don't want to give up. And now it's easy to say give up because he got hit with a body shot, and it's real hard in, within ten seconds to stand up from that. But I guess it's that point of I don't want to be okay with with giving up like that. If I'd rather get up and get knocked down immediately than just go, oh, you're going to, when, when my opponent goes, get up and you go, mm -hmm. nope, I don't ever, I, that's what I'm scared of. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go, no. But what happens if you do encounter that? I have to right. deal with it. I'll beat myself up. I'll cry in the shower a few days out of the week, you know, and afterwards, you know. I'll be real upset with myself, but time, you know, go back to the gym, you go back to doing what you have to do, and you hope for the best next time kind of thing. But it's like, if there's one thing that I'll be really upset at myself if I lost, it'd be because I gave up. Mm. I think that's that's it. Because I think with, with, I was always allowed to give up on whatever I wanted to do. Like, if my parents were really cool with me being like, you don't want to play the drums anymore? Don't play the drums anymore. You don't want to do this anymore? Don't do this anymore. Go do whatever, you know, go explore. Go do what you want to do. And um, I guess this is the one thing that, like, that one little bet I have with myself mm. where it's like, no, 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 you're not allowed to give up here. Mm. There's no exit. There's no, nobody's giving you an out. Nobody's going to tell you, oh, it's okay. You know, and it's, and so, it's just that thing for me. It's weird. I don't know. No, nah, I don't think it's weird. I think it's, uh, it's, essentially fighting this identity that that you never really approved of like you, you it almost sounds at least to me what i'm hearing is that it sounds that you kind of didn't like that version of yourself because that version of yourself it somehow it took you too long to get to where you are as a man now so it's just like every day i have to fight to not become that thing again to become to not become that jay ever yeah. again and i think that's really the battle of like essentially any sport or anything that you do decide to do mm -hmm. right so like i can you can connect it to entrepreneurship and say for me it's been that like that's it's a competition and this is where francis and i probably like use our competition between each other to like make the business yeah. move forward or even when you know i speak to francis and i'm like yo we need to find a competitor we need to we need to beat somebody's ass. It's like there's a purpose for you to change yeah. when you have this like villain. But in reality, it's like Rancis says, the 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 villain and the person that you're always fighting is is gonna be yourself. It's always you. And if you don't like competition, then what you're saying is you don't want to face yourself. That's a good point. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I to like me, that. that's what it is. As I said, yes, yeah, because like even with like you, the example you said of like oh, going up to a girl and talking to them, right? The idea of getting rejected, the idea that you don't want to go up to a girl and get rejected is because you don't want to deal with yourself, like the yeah. thoughts that come behind the the rejection. Yeah, like oh, I'm oh, not good enough. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I don't look good enough, or maybe I said something yeah. wrong, or maybe I said something stupid. Whatever the case is. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that's totally true. I mean, that's long gone now because it's married now, baby. <laughs> it's great. But I also think with going back to like what you said, like oh, like the old Jay. Um, a lot of that has to do with how I how I approach this relationship. Hmm. How I approach my relationship with Ashley and stuff like that, where it's like you gotta be the best guy possible. You know, hmm. you gotta be the guess the best person possible for your significant other. You know, you got to mm. be understanding and you got to, you know, even as simple as things like, for example, she has tickets to go to a Janet Jackson concert in like two weeks. I'm not sure she can hear me right now because she's upstairs. Do I necessarily want to go see Janet Jackson? No. Mm -hmm. But um, her mom, you know, she was going to take her mom. Her mom doesn't want to go. So, you know, who's going to go with a fucking smile on his face and a Janet Jackson t-shirt? This fucking guy. Because <laughs> that's what she likes. And, you know, it's quality time with her. Uh, but old Jay would be like, if I don't want to do that, I'm not going. 
kind mm. of thing. And I think it's it's a lot of like you, your presence means a lot mm. in a relationship, you know. Yeah. So do you believe that there is a part of being like in order to be a good competitor, in order to have a good mindset with competition, is there a part of you that needs kindness and compassion to make that happen? I'm, I'm learning that now. Uh, it's it's nice. It's nice. Um, when I was younger, it was always like this little like Napoleon complex of with drinking and stuff like that, where it's like, oh, I want to show that I'm tough kind of thing. And now it's like, oh, I know I'm tough. I don't got to show anybody I'm fucking tough. Mm. There's nobody I need to prove that I'm tough. You know what I do need to prove to myself that I need to prove that um a good partner, that, mm. you know, I'm a good son, that I'm a good friend, all these other things. And it's like, I'd rather be, what is it, a samurai in the garden or some shit like that? Oh, uh, no, two- it's, yeah, it, that's exactly what was going through my head right now. It's, uh, yeah. I re- it's better to be a warrior in a garden than it is to be a gardener in a war. Exactly. Um, that that speaks a lot to me because, like, at the end of the day, I don't want to get in a fight with fucking nobody. I don't. If I could never get in a fist fight outside of being in a boxing or a competitive sport ever again, I'd be the happiest fucking man in the world. It it proves nothing, you know. Um, mm. you just break your hand. That's essentially where it comes from. It. Um, yeah. But those other things, like the older I get, the more like that's that's what matters. That's what matters. Having mm-hmm. this little fucking farm that I have with these animals and, and my lovely lady, you know, mm. and and having my parents not far away, and being closer with my friends now, that means a lot more to me than it does to me to ever fucking go out to another bar again to ever go feel like oh i'm the fucking man i can go fall out or whatever the fuck people like to do i don't know what people like to do anymore but like all that stuff like it means nothing yeah. to me anymore this stuff means the world to me yeah and it took me a long so, time to figure it took me 30 33 years to figure that out do you feel that competition helped you figure that out very much so why do yeah. you think that is um like why competition? What about competition? Because it competition forces you to sacrifice. It forces you to to give up on certain things because you can't have it all. You can't stay out till four o'clock in the morning and think that you're gonna get better at whatever you're competing in or whatever you're training for, whether it's as lame to say, even if it's work. Or whatever it is, you know, um, you you gotta sacrifice some things in order to to succeed in whatever it is that you're doing, right? So it's like going out to the bar. Don't do it Can't anymore. Do Can't do it. Can't do it. At least you know, at least if I do go, like two beers, maybe a shot. <laughs> See you guys later, kind of thing, you know. Um, so that stuff's out the fucking door. Um, and then it, you know, having a family makes it a lot easier because I have, I have my routine. I have everything I need is in grass. I have the love of my life. I have my dogs. I have my cat, you know, um, I have a house. I have, Mm. I have everything I need. What more do I possibly need? More money? Sure. We all could use more fucking money. We all could, you know, use a bigger house and blah, blah, blah. And not have to ever worry about money ever again. Sure. Um, but it, you really need... You really need this. You really need... You, you really need the competition to... Uh, some sort of competition to, to keep you fucking going. And that's mm-hmm. what it does for me. I, I, I hate that I found it at 35. I I regret that so fucking much. <laughs> um, Why? I, no, I wish I found it when I was younger. I don't know. I just wish I had more time with it to explore it. I feel like, you know, time. All right. So I'm going to judge the shit out of you right now because I'm like just, uh, 35. 
just the 35. Why 35? 35 is like, it's not even halftime, bro. Like, you, oh, you found it in the second, you found it in the second quarter. I know. No, no, I know that. But I think more like the, the competition was of it. I think I would like I think to it's... explore competing it when I was younger. I think that like for me, it's more about understanding the the essence and the intent behind competition. I think that is, I figured that out probably around the same age. And I remember growing up with you, I was like, we were competitive. Um, yeah. We just, we had, di we had different definitions of, of competition. And I think like most, most men probably find out what competition actually means around this age. Most active men, right? Like if you play sports, you learn that in an earlier age and obviously the different levels that you play at the earlier, like I'm sure these kids that, that play at high levels, like LeBron James' son, right? Who's, who's in front of playing like, at what, these what, high levels. That. Yeah. yeah. Like they understand competition at a, a whole nother level than what we understood it at that age. And, and granted they have the opportunities and the resources and the talent to, to do that and, and leverage those opportunities to then become a better man. But they're also going to experience the same thing that we experienced which is like this idea of failure, this idea of like not feeling good enough, this idea of, you know, feeling like, you know, you're going to be rejected by the world. And the idea of like kindness and compassion, like they're going to lose that too. Um, the one thing I would say is that being on a team, like playing in like a team sport or a team environment actually teaches you that faster. And this is where like now I look at Michael Jordan and I'm like, the delicate balance or the dichotomy that comes along with being super competitive and also kindness, kind and compassionate. Like when I see the last dance, a lot of people are in between of like, you know, Jordan was an asshole or, you know, he was this kind of man. Yeah. But I felt like when, when people accept you for who you really are and the people that accepted Jordan for who he was, even though he was an asshole at times, they like understood this aspect about him, like the sacrifice that you had to make as a teammate to deal with that kind of personality, but the reward, it's like, yo, Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr, because of the opportunities he had with Michael Jordan, Phil Jackson, like these great minded athletes that yeah. now he can learn from that type of personality and handle and manage those types of personalities as a coach. Uh, that's true. The same thing, with, right? Like, this, there's like being a part of somebody like that, you know, and <laughs> just what she does. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I think I think it, it's important. I think it does teach you certain aspects about like competition in general. Like we like we stated, you stated sacrifice, kindness, compassion. Right. I think it teaches you about yourself, facing yourself. So I to answer your initial question, based off our conversation today, like yeah, it's important. I don't think you, yeah, it's super important, right? Like these guys are competing right now for your love, right? Like just <laughs> both of them. So yeah, <laughs> big ass mouth. No, so yeah, before we got distracted by the fucking by all the animals, <laughs> I feel like. Uh fucking um ace ventura sometimes <laughs> well these guys oh, but um indeed. no i think you're right competition is very fucking important it's your breath stinks buddy um so bad <laughs> I fucking need breath bro <laughs> oh man hi bubba yes hi can i finish talking now but yeah like i was saying for I was really interrupted by this adorable bastard. Um, we need competition. I don't care what anybody says. You need to have some sort of competition, competitive drive in you in order to survive in this world. I don't know how else to say it. It needs to be yeah, there. Even if, like, even if you have life handed to you on a silver spoon, you have to be competitive one way or another. There has to be something that, that you want to be good at. I, I don't think it exists without it. So Yeah. I mean, we, the real question. We, uh, yeah, is, we don't exist as humans without 
having that competitive. That, it's like a purpose. It is a it. it All right. Even in your career, you got to be competitive. Man, you have to be competitive have to be. in your career if you want to, if you want to be successful. If not, yeah. And if you read Eckhart Tolle's new book, uh, Eckhart Tolle book, Eckhart Tolle's book. He's a philosopher, and he has a book called A New Earth. And he talks about the idea of people who are like extroverted or introverted or shy or like outgoing, and all it is is an ego complex. All right. So like, if you're someone who's extroverted and uh, is outgoing and puts himself out there, right? The reason that you can enter a room and do that is because there's a sense of superiority that you have when you enter that room. And the the ego feeds off that superiority and will always try to put themselves in positions to be able to do that. Now, someone who says they're shy, it's not that they're shy. They're shy because they feel inferior when they enter a room. So there's a sense of inferiority, which is not a bad thing. It just is, right? So it's becoming aware with the idea that you either feel superior in certain environments or inferior. And I think that's the beautiful part about competition because like you start a new sport, go dance, go go do public speaking, go, go put yourself in a position where your ego has to get fucked up and see what happens. See how much you, you change you just, moments. You, you, since you mentioned dance, this whole competitive thing, like I really want to start taking salsa classes with, with Ashley. Yeah. Because I've only I put it off I put it off for so fucking long. I have to fucking learn. I have to get good in it. I <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I'll never speak a word of Spanish in my life, but god damn it, I'll be good at salsa. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> yeah. And 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 honestly the the barrier that that comes with that is just like whenever you start something that's brand new especially the older you get you're gonna suck and you're gonna look stupid yeah, yeah. that's just it that's really that's it. it it's okay it's all right it's okay to look stupid guys like how i do right now one eye is bigger than the other right now <laughs> it's okay to look stupid <laughs> all right um i think i think that we could probably end it there i think that's enough I think list. totally. Uh, we're at like 36 minutes. That's so perfect. Can chop it up this a little bit and then. I like this. Yeah. Well, let's see how it looks and how it turns out. Yeah. And then uh, convince uh, the CEO to, to get on board. There you go. Oh, so before we get off, let's remind everybody. Guys, you can find Mindset U. Everywhere that you listen to podcasts, it's also on YouTube under Beta Project. Um, mm -hmm. But go check us out on Spotify, um, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever, wherever you can find podcasts. Get those numbers up. Also, comment and message us and let us know what you want us to talk about. I keep hitting the desk. I'm making the camera shake. I'm sorry. I'm new at this. <laughs> um, yeah. And also, don't forget to follow us on don't forget Instagram. To mindset yeah. you follow that for all the content short pieces of content that will lead you to the new podcast episodes that come out yes all right thank you so much guys papa all i right. fucking love you i'll talk to you all right i love you too man peace Later.